Hello everyone, Mike Arms here, co-founder of Path Trading Partners along with Bob Iacchino. Okay, so this pullback today in Tesla. Uh, got some questions today. Oh, by the way, let me start with another question I noticed. Uh, was this, I saw this from the messages or the, uh, the comments or let's see. Let's see. No, I actually got it in an email was in an email wondering if the, these two bottoms uh, were double bottoms. The low of 539.49 from, let's see what date was that, the 5th of March and the 19th of May bottom at 546.98. And no, it's not a double bottom. Why? Let me just switch these. It's using, I'm using this one bottom over there. I'm just going to switch it to the double and you see all the targets are clearly beyond the move that started it so this is the move that started it so this cannot be a double bottom so you cannot use these targets it can just be two bottoms which is key support but it is not a double bottom therefore those targets do not apply wanted to get that out of the way first second of all got questions today uh, with the options, I'm glad people are watching the options. We had a, close to 120,000 go off at the 800s. First question was why the 800s and not the, like talked about the 810s and 820s yesterday. Well, we gapped down. First off, we gapped down today. So start looking at stuff 20 to 30 points away from, uh, in this case, since we're in stocks, dollars away. So let's see, we opened 787 and then, you know, we tried a little rally, then it pulled back. Well, you're 20 points away, that puts you just over 800. And as it pulled back, that's what, that was the impetus. Now, next question was, well, we have all these options going off. Why isn't it working? Well, you also have the S&P, the Dow, and the NASDAQ selling off really hard. So my contention would be if you did not have all that gamma going in and, and juice in the buying on it, you it would have been down a lot more. So Tesla is down, and don't worry about points. Start learning to talk if you really want to do this as a professional. Work on percentages. I mean, we talk about points all the time, like, oh, it's down $10, $20. Well, why do you want to talk in percentages, though? is because it puts everything on a level playing field. If I say a $50 stock is down 20 points or 25 points, let's say, just say it's down 25 points. What's that? That's on a $50 stock, that's 50%. That's huge. But if I say Tesla's down 25 points, it's a blip. Okay, Tesla is down thir close to, four, let's just call it 13, it was down $13.80 today. Well, on a, on a, $20 stock, that would be huge. On Tesla, that makes it 1.74%. So even a 25% drop would, wouldn't would even make it, uh, it would be around 3%. That's, you know, it's, yeah, it's something, but it's not the same. I mean, and why I'm bringing up percentages also, what was the S&P was down 2%, NASDAQ down 2.83, and Dow, and I'm talking about futures right now, one63 all right, and, and Tesla down 1.74. So if you did not have that uh, option gamma kicking in, I think Tesla would have been down a whole bunch more. So we're going to see with the market sell off. Again, we, got, we were talking about the correction yesterday. Now, this would be a pullback correction. As you see, it came in contact with the daily rotation zone, which is one of the areas we talked about. Pulling back to the top of here, not to the uh, candle bodies, but just to this peak here, coinciding with the rising daily rotation zone. So now that's a very key level to go in. Today's low is very key to go into. And you got that uh, at least a decent rally. Some options really kicked in this afternoon. When I was watching them earlier, and we were stalling out around 60,000, and then they really ramped up this afternoon, and you got some momentum moves here. So this was the first little key. Let me just show you how I did the levels today. Uh, let's see. Let's see here. We came from the high 
And then this was the major pausing bar. I don't need to go all the way down. That was from yesterday's high, by the way, not today's high. Here was the open little gap, little quick fill of the gap, then trying to run up and then just got dragged down. Here was the major level I used. So I had 769. That was corresponding again with these key low areas from yesterday and the daily rotation zone just spiking down through there this caught my eye this afternoon uh, this little move after this final push sell off this little move then just a correction sideways it could not sustain and then we started getting momentum bars that was a little run up into the close that was just a little uh, aggressive trade you can see here that was a channel line holding for a bit then becoming resistance so remember we talked about it was resistance Support break again now it's resistance, so that's going to be an area to watch for tomorrow. So that's going to be one of the key resistance areas tomorrow. Let me just jump back out here and see all the levels I have with this bigger pullback. Now we can take this. I'm just trying to clear up the chart a little. So now we got a little bigger pullback and a pausing bar there. So that's what I am going to now use with this key daily pausing bar. It is really nice level. Just want to double check something. All right. So going into tomorrow let's take a look at the shorter term chart by the way that 15 minute rotation zone held really nicely to the downside until the very end of the day so this i hope everybody's spotting this too this little area now we're below it but if we pop back above this this will be support for tomorrow if we're still below it when we open tomorrow that will be resistance so 770, 784, 778 area, that's my either support or resistance. If we open above it, that becomes support. If we open below it, that becomes resistance. Above that, then I'm looking at right around 787 as the first little area of resistance. Then above that, I'm watching for 798, 99, so roughly 799 to 800. Besides, you can do the minor intraday projections. They're going to be really minor at that point. That's where you'd go. So, the, you know, on a rally above that 789 area I talked about with the channel line, the next minor target would be about 789.70. Then minor target would be around 792.25, which is a harmonic level, and this little support becoming a resistance area. Then above that, that... 799 to 800 and these le levels i just listed are your very minor levels only for essentially active day traders now since so, uh let's see what else below this 778 area seven about 769.50 is minor then i just go to 766.37 762.29 and then 758.27. Let's see how that corresponds with the bigger level. So the rotation zone on the one hour is gone flat. So I would not use that. It was valuable until it went flat. And when they go flat, it means there's somewhat of a consolidation pattern right here, at least on the one hour. So ignore that. Uh, the four hour is still useful but I just focus on that 762.29 area coming in with the bottom of the four hour rotation zone you actually have a fair amount of support if today's low is broken you actually have a fair amount of support from about this 758 to 762 major area you have the rising four hour rotation zone you have this prior resistance becoming support level you see this black line right here and then on either side you have harmonic so that's my major support zone for tomorrow if that goes then the next area I'm targeting is 744 744 50 that's the rising 50 
exponential. I know we had a question on that. Thank you some to whoever answered that. I don't remember who, but they responded to a comment. That is the rising 50 period exponential. And you can see here, really nice with that little gap down, strong bar reversal open. So that would be my next uh, target there. And below there, about 740, 850 to 750. Uh, let me just double check this. Yeah, we're there, 745. I'm just looking with the daily. So we have major resistance, about 745.50 to 748 is your major uh, resistance area. Should this higher area, the 750, what was it again? I can't see. Sorry, I got too many lines on the chart. 758 to 762, if that should go, then I would focus on the 745 to 748 area, which would be the bottom of the rotation zone on the daily the this key critical reversal bar open where we had that um, that uh, gamma from the fr from last Friday that big gamma day and the 50 period exponential on the four hours so those are the targets should that go next area I'd be watching would be 735 to 730. That's this little area right in here to this area. I'm not going to leave those lines on the chart, but I'm just going to mark them off so you can see my next little area I'd be watching. Why am I doing this? Because the market is in a tenuous situation if the sell off continues. I mentioned last week. Uh, when what was our sell off? Let me call these up. I don't normally go to uh, the overall market, but it's important at this point. So the NASDAQ, here we go. We had that sell off on September 20th, then we did that little bounce, the NASDAQ bouncing up to the pretty flat, but uh, you know downward sloping rotation zone and then rotating back down we got a close below that September 20th low which is a warning sign I was talking about we were gonna see how the rally went and then the close back down that is a warning sign the two critical ones I'm watching are the S&P this is the S&P e-mini futures which is still above it so again the low here uh, 42.93.75. Still gonna watch. If in case we close below there, that's a major one. And here's the Dow futures, which uh, coming in at 33.478. The Dow minis, and you see that was nice hitting all the way to the double top target. And this was the move that started it, by the way, not this. You had this little hitch in it, but this is the move that started it, so that's why those double top, that double top pattern was accurate. I should probably remove that at this point, but I'll leave it on there because it, it was it's re-anchoring that low. So if we get a close in the Dow futures also below that low. So those are the we've had one out of three. One but it's showing extra weakness. So that's why I'm in cautious mode and still watching to see what happens. Now, for the upside, we already went through that targets up to 800. Since I re-anchored the other targets, what are we looking at? Because, hey, we could get a rip-your-face-off rally, and we could have, you know, we're, we seem to have a lot of option play going on this week between Friday, Monday, today, even though it was a down day, lots of option volume. So if this does get a rally and the S&P does get a rally on and you get above that 800, now if you start getting to encroaching on that 800 level, then start watching the 810s and especially the 820s for the strike. So as you zero in, that's when you kick it off that, that 20 points. Then we have 809 to 811, so that hits really nicely if you have the 810s going off. Then you have 81908, so that corresponds to the right around the 820s. Oh, then we have the 830s. <laughs> then we have 840s. This just so happened. I mean, these are just the projections that uh, so, so happens are coming in right around round numbers. Then you jump all the way to 860. So those are all your upside targets 
should you get rallies and the ones I keep focusing on above 800 is that 809 to 811 key area then 819 sorry for going a little long-winded just wanted to get dump a lot of that information out by the way you still have this divergence this weakening so we made a higher high in the daily price action but a lower high in the RSI just double checking on the weekly pattern so weekly uh, it's just still an overbought so just keep in mind also even to return to the weekly rotation zone again is back down at 740 so don't get uh, flustered with these sell-offs especially if the market sells off it's still the only time I'll really start Going into more bearish mode on Tesla's, we start breaking below the lower channel line again, which is a fairly long way off. And key support is coming in right around that 700. Could we test it? Sure, easily. It's also where the uh, 200 simple moving average is in the bottom of the channel line. So especially if we keep getting market sell-offs or Tesla bad news comes out on top of it, market sell-offs, that's the critical line in the sand support, and I'll talk to everyone later. Bye for now.